things are not looking good for the F-Type R. It is even the fastest depreciating car ever featured on this channel. In this video, I'm then also going to show you exactly how much the car is depreciating per year and how you can avoid a large part of this depreciation. But first, coffee. Now let's have a look to the market and remember to support the channel by smashing that like button. As always, we will start first by exploring the market and we will use these histograms over here to do that. At the top you can see the price distribution for the full market and this distribution is then split in a few categories. Over here we have the split between the new and the used cars and at the bottom you can see the split between the rear wheel drive and the all wheel drive F-Type R's. But let's start now with the full market. You can see that there are 303 F-Type R's for sale and that they have an average price point of $77,700. The prices start then at around $40,000 but stretch up all the way to $125,000. Now compared to the other car markets I've analyzed, the price distribution for the F-Type R looks a bit strange. For many of the markets, the price distribution namely looks a bit like this. For this market you can however see that we clearly have two tops in the distribution. One at around $60,000 and one at around $110,000. And we can see exactly why this is the case if we have a look to the histogram below. Here we can namely see the split between the new, the used and the used cars which are sold at a dealer. It is also clear now that the group of F-Types which is priced at around $110,000 are actually all new cars. This of course does then also mean that the cars priced at around $60,000 are all secondhand cars. And just the fact that there is such a large gap in the price distribution visible for the used and the new cars already tells us that there's a huge depreciation going on over here. But more about that in a bit. I namely also still want to show you the split between the rear wheel drive and the all wheel drive cars at the histogram at the bottom. Here we can see namely that there are 259 all wheel drive cars for sale and only 44 rear wheel driven cars. Also we can see that there's a huge price difference. The all wheel drive R's namely have an average price point of $67,600 whereas the rear wheel driven cars have an average price point of $53,500. And the reason for this tends to be that the all wheel driven cars are still newer as they were introduced at a later point. Since we have now some idea of how the market looks like, it's time to dive into the depreciation numbers. And as you probably know, there are two main factors influencing the price of a car, namely the model year and the mileage. We will then also have a look to the depreciation per year and the depreciation per thousand miles driven. After that we will combine these effects then and I will show you what a fair purchasing price is for an F-Type R. So then, the depreciation per year. That is shown in the graph appearing over here, where we have model year on the horizontal axis and price on the vertical axis. Every F-Type R which is for sale in today's market is represented by a blue bubble and the blue solid line going through the graph shows the depreciation curve. Also you can see that there are some black axes in the graph and these black axes show the average price point for that given model year. Finally you can see that there is a blue shaded area surrounding the depreciation curve and this shaded area shows the forecasted value range. That one I will however show you a bit later because we will focus now first on the depreciation numbers. If I namely put this graph on the big screen then you can see that the average depreciation per year and here it comes you might want to go sit down for this, is $12,177 per year. And this is not only an extremely high value in monetary terms, but also when you compare it to other cars. A Corvette C7 Z06 is for example depreciating on average at the rate of $5,132 per year. The depreciation analysis for that car you can find by the way over here. It is however key to keep in mind that this number of $12,177 per year is an average number. You can see then also from the slope of the depreciation curve that this number will be different for each model year. So let's have a closer look to that. The cars which you see in model year 2020 and model year 2019 are of course almost all brand new cars. Consequently, you can then also see that the change in average price point between these two years is very small. So let's have a look then to the change in average price point between model year 2019 and model year 2018. And the change between these two model years is actually representing the first year of ownership. Like I said, the cars from model year 2019 are almost all brand new cars, whereas the cars from model year 2018 are of course almost all secondhand cars. And it is of course also no surprise then that the average price point decreases the most in the first year of ownership. Now the average price point between these two model years is $25,000. Now, it is of course normal that a car loses most of its value in its first year. But come on, $25,000. 
the F-Type R is simply losing 25% of its value just in its first year. And this large drop in value in the first model year is then also the drop which is mainly responsible for the high depreciation number of around $12,000 per year. And after this insanely large drop, we can then also see that the depreciation rate starts to decrease with a rate of around 70 to 80% of the previous year's depreciation. And to make this a little bit more concrete, and as you can see, I had to take my laptop for that, we can say that the depreciation per year is about uh, $11.4,000 in the second year, $9,000 in the third year, and $6,600 in the fourth year. So like with any other car, you can clearly see a decreasing trend in the depreciation per year. So what about the forecasted values then? Well, to figure that out, let's have a look to the, you guessed it, forecasted value range. If we zoom in a little bit to this range, then we can see that the average price point for a car with model year 2015 is expected to be between 52.8 and 50.2 thousand dollars one year from now. And for those of you who are interested in that, this range represents the 95% confidence interval. So what does this mean then in practice? Well, the average price point for a car with model year 2015 is 51.8 thousand dollars. And if you follow this average value along the depreciation curve into the forecasted value range, then you can see that you will end up with a value of $46,700. So we can say with quite some confidence that the car with model year 2015 will be worth $5,100 less one year from now. Now I still did some further analysis on this depreciation curve and I for example also calculated the curve split by roof type and by traction type. I however didn't find any significant differences so let's move on to the second most important aspect for the value of a car, the miles. And the depreciation per thousand miles driven is shown in the graph over here where we have now miles on the horizontal axis instead of model year. And if I put this graph on the big screen you can see that the average depreciation per thousand miles driven is $11,133. And compared to other cars, this number is also a bit on the high side, but it's not as extreme as the depreciation per year. The Corvette C06, which we also use for the comparison in the depreciation per year, is for example depreciating at a rate of 888 miles per thousand miles driven. And if we look then to the depreciation curve, or actually a line, because I use a straight line over here, then we can see that the depreciation per thousand miles driven differs significantly depending on how many miles the car has driven. We can see namely that the depreciation per thousand miles driven number is mainly influenced by the first 5,000 miles. If we namely zoom in a little bit to this area, then you can see that the drop in value is huge over here. And it is of course a lot more than $1,133. Now on a positive note, this of course does then also mean that the cars which have a little bit more mileage depreciate significantly less than $1,133 per thousand miles driven. And to illustrate exactly this effect, I split the depreciation curve and that is shown in the graph over here. You can see that we have in orange now the new cars, in blue the used cars and in green the used cars sold by dealerships. And if we have a look now to the depreciation lines for the used cars, then we can get the depreciation number without the large effect of the few thousand miles. And it probably also doesn't surprise you then that this number is a lot lower. In fact, it is $480 per thousand miles driven. All right, we've seen now all of these statistics. And I think at this point, we can already conclude that the F-Type R is depreciating a lot. But what does this mean then for you as a buyer? And what would be a good price point to buy an F-Type R at, given that the prices are moving so fast? Well, to figure that out, we of course need to consider the price, the model year, and the mileage. And these three factors are exactly the factors which are inputted to a machine learning algorithm which shows us if a car is following the normal market dynamics or not. And the idea behind this is that if a car is following the normal market dynamics, it most likely is priced fairly. This does then also mean that if it doesn't follow the normal market dynamics, it's either priced over the market or under the market. The result of that analysis you can see in the 3D plot over here, where we have now indeed the model year, the price and the mileage. Also. You can see that each bubble again represents an F-Type R for sale and that the bubbles are now colored. And the darker the color, the more likely it is that that specific car is following the normal market dynamics. This does then also mean that the white bubbles are either over or underpriced. And we start by having a look to those. We can see namely at the top over here that there's quite a large group of cars which is overpriced. And the reason that they are overpriced has to do with the price mileage combination. You can see namely that in terms of mileage, there's quite a large gap between these cars and the other cars in the market. If we however look to the price, 
then we can see that this gap doesn't exist over there. So in other words, the price didn't decrease proportionally to the mileage increase. In my opinion, these cars are then also offering bad value for money. So what about the cars then which are priced fairly? Well, if we start by having a look to the model year, then we can see that these cars tend to fall in model year 2015, 16 and 17. If we also rotate the graph then a little bit, we can also see that the price point for these cars need to be between 50 and $75,000. And that if we rotate the graph again a little bit, that the mileage needs to be below 30,000 miles. Putting these numbers together then, it means that if you want to buy an F-Type R with a fair purchasing price, you have the highest chance to do this. If you buy a car from all the year 2015, 16 or 17, between 50 and $75,000 with less than 30,000 miles. So then, what to make of the market of the F-Type R? Well, there's no denying to it that the depreciation per year for the F-Type R is insanely large. But if you are completely in love with the F-Type, then you should of course just go for it and don't care about the depreciation. There are however some things you can do to limit your financial damage if you are willing to go for a used car. Over the total known lifespan of an F-Type R, the depreciation per year is namely significantly higher than for any other car which I've analyzed so far. In fact, if you buy an F-Type R from new and you will own it for four years, you're likely to lose 50% of its value. So after four years, the car is only worth half of its original value. We saw however that for the depreciation per year, this effect was mainly caused by the first year of ownership. And the same goes for the depreciation per thousand miles, where you will lose by far the most in the first 5,000 miles. If we however have a look to the numbers without this large initial effect, then we can see that although high, the numbers start to be more in line with other cars. Personally, I would then also steer away from a new F-Type and rather find a nice used one. But which one then? Well, if we consider both model year and price, then the effect of model year on price is way larger than the effect of miles on price. In fact, for those of you interested, the correlation between model year and price is about... And that is the highest I've ever seen on this channel. And therefore, I would suggest to look for a car as old as possible, up to the point that you are no longer comfortable with the model year. Now for me, this would probably mean that I would go looking for a 2015 rear wheel driven car or a 2016 all wheel driven car. And for both of those, I would try to find a car which has less than 30,000 miles driven. Now, if you would be interested in the facelift because, well, the interior is a bit nicer and they maybe also look a bit nicer, then I would be going for one of the earlier ones. And with that conclusion, we arrive at the end of this depreciation analysis. Now, if you like the analysis, but you would have preferred to see it for a different car, then please comment down below with the car for which you would like to see the analysis. I namely often use the comment section as an inspiration for the cars which I will select for depreciation analysis. Also make sure then to smash that subscribe button and to click the notification bell so you get notified when your requested analysis goes live. As always, thank you for watching and I see you next week again for a new depreciation analysis.